Okay, this video is on how to add a spool gun to a machine, but it has to be an American style spool gun. Now the difference is these Euro style have no place to put the uh, the connections. This is a screw on. This is called a Euro style. Now I did weld a bunch of aluminum with this, but it was getting very frustrating because of this long. Uh, if you to push that aluminum wire all the way from there to there, and that eight foot is too far. Now, if you cut this off and make this about that short, it would probably push the aluminum fine, but that's just too long with this curve. So as soon as you start to weld and bend this with the aluminum wire, it just get kinked up. I wanted to buy a kit to convert that Euro style, but they don't sell the electrical adapters to make that work. Because you can't connect the spool gun, so you'd have to have a Euro spool gun, but wire it so it would run the trigger for the spool gun. So this is an American style spool gun, and the wire the electrical, the aluminum wire doesn't go through that. It just sits in there. Now the problem is I tried this with a standard gun and the aluminum wire got stuck right there. Pushed it and here got stuck and then actually that's what I don't like. This thing just pushes in there and the Euro one screws in so it can't push the wire out. So what I've done is order this kit. And it's WeldingDirect.com, and the part number is spool gun 707-1850, spool gun switch, four wire switch. And it has some electrical wiring. And what this is going to do, there are two things going on in here. This is your trigger switch, and that's the difference. It only has four, two prongs, where the other, the spool gun, has four prongs. So when you go to plug this in, it needs four prongs. It needs the motor control and the trigger to make it go. So this is the trigger to make it go, and this is your motor. So you're going to have to cut this in half and hook one set to the board, one set to the motor. So when you put this trigger and switch it, that welds with the regular gun. Now if you wanna use a spool gun, you're gonna put this switch and that's going to bypass this motor and trigger to that motor through this wire. So basically, that's gonna switch. This switch right here, all it's doing is switching from this motor to that motor. And the green and red are the trigger for the motor. So basically, you gotta cut that in half Hook one there, the correct one, and then hook that in there. I was thinking about putting a, more of a quick connect, disconnect, so if I mess up, I can fix it. So let me get those spades so we can just unplug them and plug them in. And the other thing that I haven't figured out is how to wire that to that. So I'm trying to take out these uh, four things so I can put that one in there. So let me work on that. The next problem is mounting this that has nothing to bolt to the face to hold it on there to this one that had the four screws to hold it on there. So I've cut the tabs off to keep this from twisting so it's going to hold on those flat edges. And then I'm going to have to get some sort of 
spring retainer or a screw that's real thin to hold that on there from the front. So what a pain. If they would have been the same type of connector, wouldn't have been a problem, but I'm having to reinvent the, reinvent the wheel to hook up this connector. All right, that's the best I could do. I put a little seat clamp to hold that in the front and in the back. I cut that to keep it from twisting and I was able to get one little like a thing to hold it from the back, but the other screw kept stripping out. So I couldn't really put a washer or anything on that one because of... So now all I gotta do is uh, drill a hole for my switch. I'm just gonna put it right here in front and then hook up the wires and I will be good to go. All right, basically we took this set of wires going from there to there cut them and take those wires to here and these wires to there so that's exactly what I did have two going to the motor two going to the switch We're talking to myself here. okay I did some checking out to see where this was gonna fit it was not going to fit up there where I wanted it but it looks like it would fit right there just fine so I tested it out before I committed so that's gonna be my switch it's gonna be it's gonna be like that on I should have it up to be on so nobody would bump it so let me flip that around have that in the on that means if anybody bumps it it'll be spool and not the other trigger so let me flip that just loosen this flip it and that's about it. Put it back together and uh, put all the thing, but I'm gonna test it. Maybe I'll put the cover on, test it, because the only thing I'll have to switch will be these, and I can do that through the door if I have to. So let me just put it back together, and then I'll test it. Well, this trigger was working this, no matter what the switch was on. So I reversed these two wires, just like I thought. That's why I put quick connects I'm going to plug it back in and see if that will control this motor. Let's give it a try. I'm going to plug it back in. Turn the power on. That is on MIG. So this should work this now. And now it does nothing. So now the trigger does nothing, and when I hooked it up there, the trigger, when I reversed that, the trigger was only working that. So i got to sort out what is wrong with this or my wiring. All right, looks like this switch is working opposite the way. So when it flicks this way, it's going down to the bottom wires when you flick it up. So right now, if I press this, that's working. So this is working in standard mode. So this could be broken, even though it's brand new, maybe it's not working. So uh, let me switch out the guns. And so this needs to be in the down mode for that to work. So let me try it. Okay, this would only work on the old trigger gun, so I said I better look at the wiring. So basically I'm looking at the center set of wires here, and that's supposed to be going to the control board. And I see that I have a hook to the motor. So the only way this would work is if it's set on this motor. So it would never fire so I need to switch these two sets of wires and then that should make it work. That wires to the bottom so I need that one in the middle so it wouldn't ever toggle. It would only work running that motor. Okay, your 220 welder does not usually come with all this stuff so basically you have to buy an adapter that's a welding adapter to a dryer plug so that costs extra. 
I don't know what the part number is there. But anyways, if I can figure that out, I'll put it on there. Then you have to buy this long cord to be able to work where you want to work. Most of these 220s come with this adapter right here to convert it to 115 to 220 welder. Just like this one, that's 220, so you can weld that one. This one, we, it came with the plug to divert down. So you could either do welding 210. See, that's a reverse plug to that. So these were hard to figure out, these plugs. Then you got to buy a bottle and gas. So basically, on this welder, you got the on-off switch. And you have your toggle switch. And you have your spool gun. So basically, it's spitting out gas, spitting out the wire, and it's speed sensitive. So if I toggle this switch, it's for this gun that's not hooked up, that's just a straight gun. Now this doesn't work anymore, but this one still does. So this trigger, the trigger doesn't know whether it's hooked up to the spool gun or that. It's this switch that switches it. So now when I switch back to that, then this, and this is affected by the speed. I can slow it down. See how slow that's going. So it blows the gas. This is the amount of voltage that's coming out. And that's that. All right, that's gonna be my final wrap up on the aluminum welding because it's actually working with the Silly Power Ship, the uh, conversion uh, for the spool gun. Had to do the conversion for the four pin plug. The super switch added. Uh, it works off the speed and that and basically it's down to your skill level now i mean like right there i got some good welds this is my very first ones it just didn't come out good but you know as you get further along you're going to get better and better but that's the thing you know nobody wants you to practice on somebody else's stuff you got to practice on your own stuff so just go for it tacking stuff uh that's not a very good weld, but again, I'm just tacking it. I'm trying to get better. Uh, bad. These are bad welds. And I'm going way too fast. And that was a redo on top of a redo. Look at how bad that looks. So I'm going to have to just be patient. This is the last one I did, but I still can tell I'm not getting real good penetration on that side you know when I'm doing my little circles I just need to slow down see there again not good penetration that's not too bad but again I'm not a welder I'm just somebody just trying to do it so there you go you know gotta make it work gotta make it happen